I'm Don Wildman. I'm in the woods outside London, England. As far back as anyone can tell, witchcraft has been alive and well in this part of the world. And today I'm meeting a guy named Ralph Keaton. He's an English medium who's going to teach me how to rid myself of my evil demons. All right, well, this is good because everywhere I go, and I mean, I climb through cellars, caverns, basements, tunnels, awful, dank sewers. Everywhere I go, it's, a, it's haunted. You know, there's, there's spirits in these places. We talk about them all the time. I feel like I've picked some up along the way. So you're going to take part in a, in a very old traditional ceremony okay. um, to help cleanse and clear your spirit. First things first, you have to create the blessed water. Now we've started off with just no water. You're gonna pour some of this in. Mm -hmm. I cleanse you and I invoke purity. Cross. So I take two lemon slices there we go. Yep. and squeeze it right squeeze in Squeeze them straight in. And I say, with this fruit, I exercise you. With this fruit, I exercise you. All right. Okay, we'll find a spot. Um, oh, I'll probably be here somewhere. So I am creating the, the pentacle as I walk these paths. If you walk it, you're making the lines. You're connecting them together. Okay. Okay, so this is the first one, spirit. Earth, air, fire, water. Do this fruit. Mm -hmm. Before you before you do anything, you say from point to point, I cast you out. Ugh. Air, I ask you to clear my soul. Water, give me life to purify my thoughts. I thank you. Stay if you will, but go if you must. Yeah. And now you should have your own thoughts for a few seconds before you say hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. Well, the wind blowing. Yeah, I do, right you behind me. Coming. Came right behind me. Oh, it's coming. It's oh, coming. it's coming through, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's wild. That's exactly what you said would happen. The wind just came right, I felt it all chill up my back. Look, look at the mud. It's like incredibly slippery down there. I'm not worried. Gross. Oh, oh, Hold on. Very. Hold on. Oh, man. <laughs> so just be careful. All right. You ready to go? Yeah. So you can go over that way, and I can get over there and do some talking. Okay. When we're on the other side, but you got to get past all this mud right here. I'll help you. Okay. All right. A cave. Look at that. We made it. Look at it. Was that worth it? That was worth it. <laughs> This is a fixer. Okay. Now that's a production fixer. Nice. Right. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. All right, my nice turn.
what you're watching here is these guys are building the jib that cool. shoots the signature shot of Cities of the Underworld. It's called the crane shot, the jib shot. A jib is a long pole device that holds the camera at one end and counterweight on the other. To put it simply, it's a seesaw. And it's the secret behind the Cities of the Underworld shots that seem to punch through the surface of the earth. But getting this large contraption into tiny holes in the ground is next to impossible. So the entire 28-piece jib has to be built right here inside this dark, wet, and cramped tunnel. This is the hardest one ever. Ready? Yep. Okay, it goes on here. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, what's up? Thanks, dude. I'm Don Wildman on Cities of the Underworld. And look at this, we're at Hoover Dam, and we're going inside this building to take an impossible shot. All right, so we're going inside here and we're gonna shoot down inside, down that spiral okay. stair. Can you do it? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of you impossible gotta... to get in there, yeah, but okay. sure, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll meet you in there, okay. go. Uh, oh man, we got more stairs? It just keeps going. All right. Is there any light down there, you know? No. Now, on this show, we live or die by how well we can photograph dark, confined spaces. And we've got a crew down there right now at the bottom of this spiral staircase. What this leads down into is Hoover Dam. It's a tough shot. Come on. What are you guys doing? Hope you guys have a battery because I'm out of light. You're out of light? Yeah. Whoa! Be careful. Okay. We're going in there. Oh, man. I can't be serious, right? <laughs> Are we gonna go in there? The thing is, I can't go in there. Oh, really? We yeah. can't go in there? Unless we can do this. I can go in there, right? No, I mean, like, I think it's serious. But you can, like, kind of climb in there. Alright, so I'm gonna climb, I'm gonna climb in, and then I'm gonna climb out, and that's where you're gonna find me, and then I'll tell you where we are. <laughs> Careful because there's a hole right where your feet are. Okay. All right. Oh, whoa. Ow. Ow. You all right? Okay. Hey, Mark. Let's swap cameras. Take this. Don, are you okay? Yeah. Nah, fine. We're in the belly of Hoover Dam. I just climbed up. Look down there. It's a huge pipe. What we're inside of here is this giant structure. It's actually the spillway on the Nevada side of Lake Mead. All right. So the idea is we climb around, we squeeze the cameras through these holes. I climb through tunnels, and that's how we do the job. That's how we get cities of the underworld to take you in the underworld. Belgium near the bloody battlegrounds of World War I and I'm gonna learn what it's like to be a World War I soldier fighting Hitler. You're gonna show me what it feels like to be a soldier? I'm gonna right? show you how it was to feel uh, like a real soldier with wool uniform and everything. Okay. To war. You and me, let's go. Okay, let's go. The long way of temporary, it's a 
a long way, way to Tipperary, but my heart's right there. Woo! Good. All right, so we're in battle. Yeah, we're um, an actual surviving construction of World War One. This is World War One here. Yeah. So I'm a lowly what? Corporal private. You're a private. So go ahead, give me some orders. Load arms. All right. Then you open the bolt. Of course, you put off the safety first, <laughs> and then you open the bolt. This is a clip All right. with blanks. Pull back the bolt. The clip goes in here, and now you push with the thumb all the rounds in. Right, and now loaded. you have to be very careful because it's loaded. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Aim. Fire! <laughs> Woo! Man! Fire a live one. Oh, you have a pressure here about 10 kilograms hitting you. Oh, bang! Yeah, yeah, thanks. And the rifle jumps up. <laughs> that would be the reality. Okay. Stand to! Five rounds, rapid fire! Yeah! Come on, hurry up! Come around, okay. Stand to! Gas, gas, gas! Yes. Come on, hurry up, ten seconds! Don't panic! We're almost there! <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, you will be already choking on those. Over the top, come on, go oh. over, go over. Assault, by an attack, come on. Come on, get out of private. Come on. He's a gunner. He's too green to survive. I'm Don Wildman, I'm in Belgium at one of the oldest castles in all of Europe, Bouillon Castle. And I've come here to learn about medieval hand-to-hand -hand combat. You must be the man. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well Great to meet you. You too. Yeah. So you're all dressed up for fighting? Uh, yes, today I'm the knight of the castle. Yeah. Excellent. Tell me about the sword. Is this very similar to what I would have seen in, in the 11th century? Yes, you? exactly the same. So I'm going to fight you today? Yeah. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, yeah. And I have to get to look like you. I come. All right. Yeah. So this castle is from the time of the, of the Knights Templar, all right? So just about the Crusades, the 11th century or so. And this symbol here is actually a symbol that they used. Which is pretty wild when you consider. I mean, I, I'm dressing up here, but this is where these guys came from. It's intense, huh? Come here. What did they wear capes for? Uh, for, for the cold, for the wind. This is what I want to wear right here. Uh, a little tight. A little tight. Uh, a little Ow, my ears. Come here. Up, 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 up. Okay, slicing the ears off. Okay. Here we go. Oh, it fits. So, uh, so the best two hands, the first, and yeah. the second you take your hands. Uh -huh. You are this arm or this arm you put right-handed. Yeah. Okay. So and you pass your finger there. Mm -hmm, okay. It's more easy for. Oh. Okay. Swinging it around. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And when you have this, when you begin, mm -hmm. you go and you always in movement. Okay. Always. And do I block with the everything's with the blade? It's preferable. Okay. Mm, you you risk of break. Oh, I break it that exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I I attack you now. Okay, I'm waiting for you. One, two, three. Dead. <coughs> Damn, that hurt, actually. Uh, I think I won. Huh? So I won. One, one. I drew blood, I won. Yeah. That's yes, the first blood. You won it. So simple. Oh, okay. As you want. Yes, it's normal. Oh, yeah. Go off and drink. It's together. time to drink beer. You know, in Belgium, <laughs> we have the best beer yeah. in the world. Hey, it's Don Wildman. This is my little baby. Check this out. 1973 MG Midget. My life revolves around this thing. So, I bought this car in New Hampshire a couple of years ago, and it didn't run. I've replaced all these parts and spent far too much money bringing it back to life. But it's totally wrong for me. I'm way too big for it. But, can you stand it? It's like the cutest thing in the world. 
Now the beauty of living in Southern California is that you don't have to dry anything. I'm done. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted a British sports car. Then this thing just fell into my life. He has a lot of eyes around town. Looks like just a little labor of love. Why does this engine just decide to stop? The fans are fine, right? Yeah. I put oil in it yesterday. I got this mechanic not too far from here. He loves hearing from me. So, my British sports car is really, really sexy and cool until I have to push it. See what Declan can make of this. There he is. What did you do this time? Oh my gosh. What did you do this I time? I didn't do anything. The car was driving perfectly normally. It just dies. Just, just literally goes out. And I'm thinking that it's something like a starter maybe. You said nothing would go wrong with this car. That's if you stayed underground. <laughs> and this should be completely full of fuel, so it's empty. So we know that you're out of gas. That's the whole problem? That's your whole problem. I was out of gas. Don Wildman, I'm outside of Rome. Gladiators had to undergo years of training. So I've arranged to meet this guy who's gonna show me how to be a gladiator. Oh, look at this, it's gladiator school. Giorgio? Sorry, excuse me. Hey, I'm Don. Hey, hey. How, how are you? Nice to meet you. Hey. Goodness, you're doing it. You're uh, gladiators. Yeah, what? Well, uh, so I'm gonna fight this guy. Sure. But first I gotta dress up like that. Sure. Okay, here goes. Now. Feeling increasingly gladiatorial, increasingly macho. All right, I'm ready. Oh man. Well, first of all, this thing is squeezing right into my cheek, right in my chin. It's very tight. I can see about this much. Told you. Yeah. There's no visibility. But I look cool. Right? You are right, then, it. I am. Okay. Here goes nothing. And the armor. Gladiator down. No, no. I hurt my nose. All right, so I tried to triax with the net. Total disadvantage there. So I'm going to do this one. A little claustrophobic. Push him in the corner. Okay. That was good, huh? Thank you. Nice. I came up with that little move myself. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, I just want to recap. So, with a bigger shield, I am a tank. I can move straight at him, right? Right. And I did something really clever. I stepped on the net. That was my big moment. We prepared a little surprise for you. Uh oh. Of course, you have now enough training. I'm on the okay. You enter the school, mm -hmm. you fold. And so, we have a little present for you. Uh -huh. It's coming. The wooden sword. Thank you so much. that you are free to go. At the end of their career. Sure. Because they fought well. Yeah, this, is, this means that now you are free. This is my sword of freedom. Keep it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, very good. All right. Mm -hmm. ah.
Grazie. Ma pure a me. Grazie. Ah, grazie. Saluto. Saluto. Ah. Look up here, see these uh, islands here? That's where we're going right now, up in that mountain. Wow. So we couldn't get the, the vehicle down here because the, the, the dirt's too soft, but we're gonna park up there and get some of these local guys to help us take the stuff up that mountain. So normally our hardest shot involves squeezing into small dark spaces somewhere. In this case, it's climbing up to the top of the mountain. About halfway up to this point. More than a thousand feet more to climb. You trip, you're going for a, a big tumble. This is the most <laughs> treacherous road we've come to so far. Uh, you see these little footholds that have actually been worn away just of thousands of years of people climbing up this way. I'm in Egypt, and I'm in the desert. About four hours south of Cairo, you run into more date palms and more water than you know what to do with. It's an oasis, the Baharia Oasis. And I've come here tonight to learn how to prepare a traditional Bedouin meal. Basically, I'm learning how to cook a goat. This goat's got to go into this fire. <laughs> Alright, so those burlap rags are soaking wet. The metal on top, the goat goes in there for two hours or an hour or two. And supposedly in a little while, delicious. digging, uncover this goat. You can smell the aroma. Mm, that's goat. 